uh, who is Julia Kaufman from Israel. She is a SALTA certified teacher, a regular conference presenter, and probably some of you have met her in person when she was in Moldova or maybe at some other international events. As you can see from this description, she works with uh, students who have some learning disabilities. And also in this trouble sometimes, she tries to use technology like Zoom, Mira, smart platforms. So let's find out how is it possible uh, what are your secrets for successful teaching? Uh, Julia, thank you for accepting the invitation. Now over to you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you again. Just a minute. Well, and then here are some more facts uh, about myself. Larissa has already told that I am based in Israel. And uh, I am an English coordinator in uh, high school, and uh, I am a regular conference presenter. But, uh, besides, uh, uh, I, I, I'm an IELTS instructor, and uh, I use uh, students who have different learning disabilities, or they're just weak students. And um, I use different uh, methods to make them succeed. Well. And now, uh, this is my agenda. I'm going, first of all, I'm going to tell you why kids, and not only kids and adults, want to learn differently. And why is it uh, possible? Why, uh, uh, the, why they need to do it? Uh, later, I'll demonstrate uh, a piece of theory about cognitive science perspective. I'll also tell you about inclusive education and uh, I also want to pay attention uh, to learning disabilities or just weakness. It's uh, very important uh, to know if your students have learning disabilities or perhaps they don't, but uh, uh, they struggle and why they struggle and uh, how to help them. Later, I'll introduce you some steps of online teaching and possible stages. And uh, finally, I'll demonstrate you a practical task, how to conduct um, a demo lesson on Miro. Okay, I hope you are ready. So let's start. Um, why do you think uh, uh, I have just used uh, a piece of music? Who wants to answer? To capture attention. Exactly. It's a good way to catch the students' attention. Especially... And to create positive atmosphere. Yes, exactly. It's very important if you have uh, weak students, or very challenging students, or you teach special education class, and uh, uh, kids uh, have uh, ADHD, which means uh, they are hyperactive, and uh, you need just to catch them. Okay, well, let's continue. Well. So, this is the quotation that I'd like to start my presentation with. If I can't learn the way you teach, will you teach me the way that I can learn? Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, yes, of course. Let's try. Why do they struggle? Perhaps uh, they have dyslexia, uh, maybe poor memory, maybe ADD or ADHD, which means hyperactivity. Maybe they have speech or language problem, or probably they're just uh, weak students. Maybe they're motivated, but they don't understand 
anything and they become frustrated. Okay, let's continue to play with you. Well, uh, currently, uh, I'm stopping my, uh, uh, the demonstration of the screen. Well, now I can see all of you. Let's play. I want you to switch off your screens. Please, switch off your screens. Uh, okay, switch off your screens. Everyone, выключите экраны. Switch off your screens. Cameras, maybe. Yes, uh, switch off your cameras, yes. Well, now let's play who has a cat or a dog at home. Please uh, switch on your cameras. Okay, I see that quite a lot of uh, people have pets. Uh, for example, uh, Natalia, uh, Irina, Alina have pets. Okay, uh, please. Mm. Now uh, it's time to ask who has a pet? For example, uh, Irina Pomazanovsky, uh, which pet do you have? I, I have Irina. a dog, even two dogs. Okay, Irina has two dogs. Okay, please. Uh, Inga Smirnova, uh, could you tell me which pet Irina has? Well, she has two dogs. Okay, well, Faina, I think Irina has a cat. No, she doesn't have a cat. She has two dogs. Okay, well, so you see, it's uh, also one of the activities how to catch their attention. Um, it's uh, an element of opening activities. Uh, imagine that I have caught uh, their attention with the help of a picture or a piece of music or um, something interesting or maybe a game. And then uh, I use the element uh, of opening activities. If uh, I have a heterogeneous class, uh, uh, I ask uh, them, for example, uh, yes or no, or correct me. Uh, I told something false. For example, Irina has a cat, and uh, someone corrected me. No, Irina doesn't have a, a cat. She has a dog. The same uh, you can use online. When you ask them, to switch on or switch off uh, the cameras. Okay, well, let's continue. Now I want to quote, uh, to quote uh, Nathan Sekalovich from London about uh, uh, cognitive science. A cognitive science perspective would hold that learning activities in the classroom should not only recreate the mental, the mental processing involved in communication in the, the real world, but they should also provide learners with opportunities for systematic repetition in order to activate and reactivate the same set of cognitive processes. Well, now I want to explain uh, this game. Yeah. Uh, for example, someone has a dog or no, he or she doesn't have a dog. He or she has a cat and vice versa. Okay. Why I use it? Uh, this is the way to uh, reactivate them, uh, to make them uh, use present perfect uh, uh, right. We cannot say uh, she 
no has. She doesn't have, or they don't have. Or also, even weak students can ask uh, those uh, who are more advanced. Uh, for example, uh, do you have a cat or a dog? Do your friends have any pets? In this, uh, this is a way of repetition. Uh, it doesn't matter online or offline. So you can use this activity um, both in the classroom, in the real classroom, and in the virtual one. Well, now I want to tell you about inclusive education. Students with special education needs, SEN, are taught in mainstream schools. In Israel, uh, there is a chain of, school, of, of uh, schools for special education. For example, Beit Ekstein, uh, where I work. And not only. And uh, there are also uh, special classes in uh, regular schools. Uh, those who are taught uh, in schools uh, for special education needs are supposed uh, to complete the full matriculation program. Uh, Israeli matriculation program includes uh, reading comprehension, listening comprehension, uh, writing, uh, speaking, and uh, it also includes uh, literature. It doesn't include any exercises for grammar or vocabulary, but yeah, but uh, next year it's going to include the vocabulary practice, but uh, not now. And uh, currently uh, we are preparing kids for reading comprehension, listening, writing and speaking. And speaking uh, usually is uh, held uh, in a different, uh, on a different day. When uh, someone comes from the Ministry of, someone from the Ministry of Education comes to school, to test the kids. And uh, they also complete the literature program. It seems to be difficult, but later I'll demonstrate you a demo lesson. Well, kids uh, also can study in heterogeneous classes. What does it mean? They may be of the same level of matriculation or if you teach uh, in elementary school or in junior high, uh, they are supposed to be of the same lesson, but all the classes are heterogeneous. Why? Because uh, some kids are good at uh, speaking, but uh, not very good at reading comprehension and uh, writing, and vice versa. Um, I also have uh, kids uh, who do uh, the reading comprehension well, but uh, they cannot speak well. Oh. Okay, and uh, uh, our country uh, had uh, to say, yeah. Um, we, uh, in our country, uh, we had to teach uh, at home on Zoom uh, during the quarantine. And uh, all the teachers and the students uh, had to learn how Zoom works uh, and uh, other platforms such as Google Classroom, Miro, and uh, some more. Well, so on Zoom, uh, we can place uh, the students uh, in different groups uh, as well as uh, we want. So it doesn't matter uh, if they want to communicate uh, with uh, other students or don't want. Of course, they can ask you to uh, talk to their friends, but uh, sometimes uh, we don't have an opportunity. So we can use Zoom to place them to different groups. And uh, we can uh, give special tasks only for weak students or uh, for both weak 
and uh, advanced students uh, together. For instance, weak students can uh, just ask questions uh, and uh, advanced students can answer. For example, a weak student can ask, uh, what was the weather yesterday? And uh, a more advanced student uh, can uh, uh, give a detailed answer. You know, it was hot and uh, I stayed at home because uh, it was impossible to go outside and so on. And uh, they can um, change their roles. Uh, so um, advanced students uh, can ask weak students. Uh, so uh, it means peer teachings, peer teaching, when kids teach each other. And uh, more advanced students uh, help the weak ones. Well. Now it's time uh, to tell you about learning disabilities or weakness. In each class, I'm sure that uh, you have students uh, who don't do very well. They are motivated, but they cannot. As I have already told, uh, students with learning disabilities have such uh, disorders as uh, dyslexia, dysgraphia, hyperactivity, and, and, this, uh, and uh, they make the same mistakes all the time, they are distractible, uh, or they have unreadable handwriting, and they need more time for explanation. And of course, uh, they need a lot of attention and support and weak students, uh, who are they? Uh, they don't have any learning disabilities. Probably they are weak. They are weak because they have missed the material. The level of the group is too high for them. Uh, why do they go to the advanced group? Probably they want uh, other kids uh, uh, to be more advanced uh, because they want to be motivated uh, to succeed. Uh, and uh, probably they overestimate uh, their level and uh, want to be in a more advanced group, but uh, they might be frustrated and uh, change the group. Probably uh, they are not very good at English. They get low grades in English, but uh, they might be excellent in mathematics, physics, uh, and uh, other subjects. But when they understand the material, it motivates uh, them uh, to make other, uh, to uh, make the success. They make progress easily, and uh, start getting better grades, and uh, motivation makes wonders. Well. How to create, uh, now I'm going to tell you about the steps of the lesson. First of all, as uh, I have already told, you need to catch their attention. But before you do it, uh, while preparation at home, you need to create a learner-centered content. What does it mean? Um, first of all, you need to put the learner's needs, needs, learners needs first. Then uh, you need to design the contact. It uh, may be, uh, uh, it depends uh, on the topic of the lesson. It may be a literature lesson or grammar or reading comprehension. It doesn't matter uh, what you are going to teach, but the content uh, must be interesting uh, for the students 
and uh, success uh, orientated. Uh, or, yeah, the, it uh, it is supposed uh, to make them succeed. Okay. Uh, when you have chosen the content, uh, choose uh, the topics. For instance, um, you're going to teach grammar. And uh, first of all, you need to create the background of the lesson. As uh, I demonstrated at the beginning of my presentation, if you're going to teach uh, present simple, you should start your lesson with asking simple questions. For example, find uh, someone who uh, plays uh, basketball. Do you play basketball? First of all, switch off your cameras and uh, switch on if you play basketball. And then you can ask them, how often do you play basketball? Which days do you play? Where do you play? Okay. And uh, make uh, other kids uh, discuss uh, their peers. For example, uh, Daniel plays basketball three times a week. He goes to the sports center and uh, uh, he makes progress. It means what he does every day or regularly. And uh, then you can give them something connected uh, to sports, to basketball or other sports. So uh, in this way, uh, you can build uh, a lesson. How to catch their attention. No matter in the regular classroom uh, or uh, in the online class, you should create a dyslexia-friendly atmosphere. Uh, it's up to you. In the regular classroom, uh, you can talk to them uh, that uh, you are interested, everyone to succeed, uh, believe in your students and uh, the, same, uh, the same can be created online and uh, also you need to use opening activities which ones it's up to you uh, probably just uh, to catch their attention for example to talk about uh, the weather or about the situation in the world. For example, uh, we are staying at home because of the quarantine. Uh, the situation uh, with coronavirus is uh, not very good, it's difficult. So you can discuss news. It's up to you. What else? You also need to use your voice, for example. Listen, that is what I want you to do. Also use body language and ask them to use body language. While you're explaining them, ask them to switch their microphones off. And if they want to answer, uh, just to raise the hand. Who wants to answer? Raise your hands. And uh, then they can switch their microphone uh, on and answer. And uh, then uh, you should uh, build on. Also, you need to create uh, the lesson plan. It's a good idea to demonstrate uh, it while the video conference. If you teach from home, uh, you should write uh, such a plan. For example, in today's lesson, we are going to so and so and so. 
For example, we are going to learn new vocabulary or talk about or review how to describe. And uh, in this part, uh, it's a part of uh, the checklist. What uh, they have done today and uh, the students uh, can complete the checklists. For example, today I have learned uh, or before the next virtual class, I have to do so and so and so. And uh, which homework they should do. To give them the homework or not to give, it's up to you. Some students uh, uh, don't want to do their homework, but you can uh, just tell them, if you don't want to do your homework, it's your responsibility. As for the checking homework, well, I don't think uh, it's a good idea to check homework during the lesson because it's a waste of time. Uh, you can, but uh, what I do, when I give them the homework online, I just ask them to send it to me and uh, I check it myself. And uh, then I uh, give them feedback. I send it back to them uh, with the feedback. Well, team building. Uh, what does it mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, they can use uh, their real names or nicknames. It depends on the game. And uh, what about roles? Um, you can uh, give them uh, idea, an idea how to, uh, which roles uh, they're going to play or what they're going to do, or they can decide themselves. Uh, also, you should give them autonomy, uh, how to choose teams. And uh, provide them team building, uh, provide them with the team building activities. If uh, you're going to give them a project to do, so uh, working groups, uh, it's a good way to do projects together. Uh, in Israel, uh, a final project is uh, also a part uh, of the final exam. Students can do it uh, alone or in small groups of two or three or four. Uh, they uh, choose a topic, uh, decide what they're going to write about and uh, uh, write the projects together. Um, some students uh, can uh, collect the material, some can uh, collect uh, photographs, or some can write. Uh, those who are good at writing can write. Uh, those who are not very good at it can just uh, ask uh, for ideas uh, or tell them uh, what to write, and how to write and uh, collect photographs. Uh, for example, one of the most popular topics in Israel is Holocaust. Uh, some students uh, go to Poland and collect the material. Um, they visit uh, Auschwitz, Srebrenica, and other concentration camps and uh, collect uh, the materials. But uh, those who don't want to go there, they can uh, do it online. Okay. Now, uh, here I, 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 they can I, I'm sorry, they can do it in uh, Yad Vashem because you have a very wonderful museum there on the Holocaust. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, but you see, uh, some students are eager to go to Yad Vashem or uh, Auschwitz in Poland, but some think uh, it's depressing and don't want to go there. So they prefer doing it uh, online. They prefer 
uh, asking uh, their families about uh, the victims of Holocaust uh, uh, who probably died, you know, uh, their great great grandparents who might uh, die, uh, who might be the victims uh, of Holocaust. Yeah. Okay. Here I have told about uh, long-term projects. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, it takes uh, a month or two months to do. And uh, what about short-term projects? Uh, you can give them after reading tasks. And uh, we'll tell about it later, after I demonstrate a demo lesson. And uh, finally, team building is a part of socialization. So they need to communicate, they need to develop the skills of critical thinking, uh, collaboration, communication. They are the most important things, the most, the most important skills of the 21st century. Well, and uh, finally, why do you think you should uh, build groups? Just to, so that they will have fun together. And uh, they can create uh, the group games. Um, it's, uh, it depends. Sometimes uh, teacher create group games. Sometimes they give uh, this opportunity to their students so that they will play together. So, there are a lot of online games uh, that you can offer them. Currently, I'm not going to tell about uh, group games, but uh, if you want to know, you can write to me later and uh, I'll give you the sites. Well. So why do they need to work in groups? To work together, to have fun, and uh, to communicate. Well, okay. And uh, now, um, I want you uh, uh, to work in groups and to discuss uh, what you do with your for students uh, in groups, how you catch uh, their attention, which activities you give you, or you should give. Okay, uh, let me uh, create uh, the groups. Just a minute. Okay, uh, Irina, they are, all, Larissa. they are all set. Julia, yes. Uh, Created those. Uh, yeah. Uh, could, uh, could you help me to create the groups? I think we've already done that. Uh huh. So people started joining and started being in the group. You see that there are fewer and fewer here. So <laughs> everybody's going to the groups now. <laughs> 